and we're going to talk about shared key encryption. So shared key encrypt, uh, cryptography, that's a core part of uh, cryptography and has throughout history been the uh, cryptography. So we're first going to talk a bit about ciphers and then we are going to uh, go into security and how we define security for uh, shared key crypto systems. So the idea of a cipher is that Alice and Bob uh, share a small secret and then Alice takes a message, combines it in some way with this secret and sends it to Bob. If Eve captures uh, whatever Alice sent, she shouldn't learn anything about the message. And this is due to the, uh, the shared secret that Alice has with Bob. Remember uh, Kirchhoff's principle, the, the shared secret is the only thing that uh, should prevent Eve from, from getting to the message. Uh, when Bob receives this, he combines what he received with the, uh, his copy of the shared secret, and then he gets the message back. So that's the idea. So uh, some general notation. So uh, block ciphers, so, so to do encryption. Uh, then we have uh, as input a fixed sized key, uh, which is usually denoted K, and a fixed size block of plain text. So uh, that's the message. Uh, the plain text is the message. And as output, uh, we get a fixed size block of cipher text. So that's the encrypted message. And usually we denote this as uh, ENC as in encryption, uh, the key, and then what is supposed to be encrypted. So the plain text uh, P in this case, and we get the cipher text C. Uh, conversely for Decryption, yeah, we take as input a fixed uh, size key K and a fixed size block of cipher text. And as output, we get a fixed size block of plain text again, so we get the message back. Uh, so we usually denote decryption as DEC here. Uh, and then we, we have the key here and the cipher text and back comes the plain text. <laughs> So uh, we will capture uh, the definition of a crypto system formally uh, like this. So we have a tuple uh, MCKED where M is a finite set of plain texts and C is a finite set of ciphertexts. Uh, so the message space and the ciphertext space and then we have the key space which is a finite set of keys. And then E and D are the sets of encryption and decryption rules. Uh, and more importantly, the, the core part of the, the definition is that for every key, uh, there is an encryption rule uh, in E and a decryption rule in D such that uh, the encryption rule here is a function from uh, the message space to the ciphertext space. And the decryption rule is a function from ciphertext to message. And uh, the core part is that these are each other's inverses. So if we encrypt the message M and then we decrypt the result, uh, then we get M back. So you should be able to decrypt uh, again. So let's look at uh, one example. So the shift cipher, which is a, an ancient cipher supposedly used by uh, Caesar back in uh, yeah, a few, few uh, almost 2000 years ago. And in this uh, cipher, we have the message space and the cipher text space and the key space uh, are all the same. So they are, uh, the integers modulo 29, so 29 because uh, we, we count on the Swedish alphabet, uh, which has 29 letters instead of English 26. Um, and then we define for each key K here, we define encryption uh, of a message M as M plus uh, the key modulo 29, and M is uh, a message. 
and then decryption correspondingly uh, as the ciphertext minus k mod 29. So you can see these uh, take each other out. And if we want to uh, do encryption, then yeah, we have to map uh, these numbers to, to characters and characters to numbers and to be able to do this. So if we have the encryption key three here and we encrypt uh, seven, which is uh, edge, uh, then we take seven plus three, which is 10 and we get uh, J here. And then we uh, do this throughout. So E becomes G and J becomes uh, L. So we've encrypted the Swedish uh, word hey, which means high, and uh, the encryption uh, is JGL. So note here that each message is just one character and each ciphertext is also just one character. So what we uh, need to do to, to send a word is to split it up uh, in several messages. So to, to send the word hey here, we, we actually need to consider three messages uh, in a row. Uh, so the, the shift cipher, as I said, uh, is a classical cipher, also known as the Caesar cipher, uh, because Caesar supposedly used this, and uh, it is easily broken by hand. Uh, so we, we illustrate it here. Uh, so it's just for illustrative purposes that we have it here. Now, uh, let's talk about how we define security here. So Shannon, uh, he introduced uh, in a paper called Communication Theory of Secrecy Systems from 1949, he, he um, discussed what it means uh, for a crypto system to be secure. And if we have this, uh, we have a crypto system uh, like this, so the tuple of offsets, and we have uh, two random variables, M and C, so uh, a random variable which outputs messages and a random variable which outputs ciphertext. Then we have a perfect secrecy if and only if the probability uh, that uh, the random variable m here outputs uh, this particular message, given that the uh, random variable outputting ciphertext has output this particular ciphertext, is equal to the probability that m output uh, this uh, uh, particular message. So what this means is that uh, M and C are perfectly independent. Uh, that's exactly what this uh, means. So uh, given that we have seen that this happens, it doesn't reveal any information uh, about uh, the message M. So uh, given that phrasing, uh, we can equivalently phrase it uh, in terms of uh, Shannon entropy. So the entropy of M given uh, C is equal to the entropy of M, which means that C doesn't reveal any information uh, about M. Uh, so Shannon, he also proposed a theorem in uh, this paper uh, with this, along with this uh, definition uh, which uh, says what the crypto system must look like uh, to actually uh, fulfill perfect secrecy. So uh, in his case, uh, the, the sizes of these uh, sets, the, the key space, the ciphertext space, and the message space must be equal. So they must be of equal size. And uh, then such a system provides perfect secrecy if and only if for every key that is used, uh, it must be used with equal probability, so uniform, uh, uniform distribution. And for every plain text uh, message M and ciphertext C, there is a unique key such that uh, under, if you use this key to encrypt M, you get C. 
so that's uh, what it says. So we have to choose the keys uh, uniformly random. So we can't choose a password that we, we like and use that as key. We, we really must uh, completely randomly choose uh, the key. And uh, this means that we are not allowed to reuse keys either. Uh, so that's also uh, crucial in this definition. And then if you, if you have a message uh, M, if you change the keys, you change the ciphertext. So uh, for every, uh, for, for, for a particular message, it can give uh, any of the ciphertexts, uh, any of the ciphertexts is, is possible. Uh, it's just to, to change the key. So uh, that's what it says. So let's look at one uh, crypto system which actually fulfills uh, this, uh, uh, fulfills this definition. Uh, actually, the, the Caesar cipher does fulfill uh, this definition if you just uh, encrypt uh, one uh, letter. So if you, because uh, what we did with uh, our example before, then we reuse the same key uh, three times. And that's why uh, the CSR cipher doesn't uh, provide uh, any perfect secrecy. But if we just encrypt one letter, then uh, the CSR cipher does uh, fulfill uh, perfect secrecy. So the one-time pad is basically an extension of the Caesar cipher. Uh, so uh, let uh, if we have uh, an in integer n here, a positive integer, then basically the message space, ciphertext space, and key space, uh, they are of uh, length n here. So we have uh, uh, bit strings of length n. So that's what we are uh, using. Now, uh, what we, uh, so the difference here uh, compared to the Caesar cipher is that we use uh, strings uh, instead of uh, just uh, one individual letter. So, so the one time pad is a generalization of the Caesar cipher to, to strings. So then all our uh, keys will uh, have uh, n components like this. The plain text will also have n components like this. And the ciphertext will also have n components like this. So now we can actually uh, send a message of uh, length n bits. So now we can actually send some, uh, some strings, which is more useful. Uh, but uh, the problem is the, the key must also be uh, n bits long. Uh, so what we can uh, uh, can do, uh, the way we define encryption is that uh, if we want to encrypt the message m under a key k, we simply take m1 plus k1 and so on and mn plus uh, kn. So we add each one and we were working uh, modulo 2 here. So we take each of these components uh, modulo 2. So, so we keep them as bits. So basically this is an XOR operation. And uh, since we are working on bit strings, we can actually have uh, the decryption algorithm and uh, encryption algorithm equal. Uh, so that's nice with bit strings. Uh, if we would have used uh, anything other than bits, then uh, they would have been different. So then we would have to have a minus here for the decryption. And uh, the key K here must be chosen uniformly randomly for each uh, encryption. So we need as much key material as we have message material. Now, uh, the perfect secrecy definition is uh, hard to use in practice. I mean, since uh, we need to use the one-time pad, and that's not really useful, for instance, if you, you want to uh, have a, an encrypted connection to your internet bank, for instance, 
uh, you don't want to exchange that much uh, key material and you don't want to have to go to the bank every now and then to, to exchange key material so that you can uh, use uh, your internet bank. Uh, that's not particularly useful. Uh, so to get around this, uh, these limitations of perfect secrecy, uh, we use uh, a computer scientific uh, definition of uh, security for uh, ciphertext, uh, for, for ciphers, for block ciphers. And uh, this definition is also what is used uh, when you use a block cipher as a building block in a more complex protocol than you assume that it, it, uh, you have the properties uh, that we will define uh, here in this definition. So let's say that we, uh, uh, so the formal term of uh, uh, the, the theoretical model of a, a block cipher is a pseudo random permutation. Uh, so we'll see uh, more what this is here. So let f here be a function uh, which takes uh, two strings, so uh, an s-bit string and an n-bit string, and maps this to uh, an n-bit uh, string. Now f is a pseudo-random permutation if uh, for every any key that we choose here, uh, f is a bijection, which means that uh, there exists an inverse, so uh, we can go either uh, way. And for any key, uh, we can efficiently evaluate uh, f, because yeah, it's kind of useless if we can't evaluate it uh, efficiently, uh, because yeah, then it exists, but we, we can't, can't actually compute it. So we want to be able to, to compute it. And then finally, the core of the definition uh, for all uh, efficient distinguishers D. Now, uh, distinguisher is uh, simply uh, an algorithm which is allowed to, to make guesses. So it's a randomized algorithm. And it's supposed to distinguish between uh, two things. Uh, so uh, the the two cases that we have is that uh, we take uh, d and we give it access to to f of k for uh, some uh, k that we choose randomly, and uh, then it is supposed to output uh, uh, one or zero, and uh, it's supposed to distinguish. Uh, from if we give uh, the uh, completely random uh, permutation that we have chosen, so, so not uh, capital F here uh, with a randomly chosen key, but we really choose a random permutation uh, completely at random. And if uh, D cannot uh, distinguish between these, uh, then we say that it's secure. And the way we capture that it cannot distinguish uh, between these is that uh, if we give it the uh, save the random function that we have and it outputs one, so it outputs one with uh, some probability since it's allowed to, to do guesses and stuff. Uh, and if the probability of it outputting one also when we give it the randomly chosen permutation, then it cannot distinguish between these two. So if the difference here is uh, very, very, very small, uh, so it's negligible, then uh, we say that uh, it's secure because then probabilistically it cannot distinguish uh, between these two, uh, no more than, than lucky guesses. So that's uh, how we define uh, security from a computer scientific point of view. Then. So this is uh, this is a computa this is computational security uh, because uh, it's an efficient algorithm. So we have some limitations on how much uh, computations it's allowed to to make. And that was everything uh, for this time. Uh, thank you.